Welcome to iLecture Online. Now we're ready to show you an example of how to trace a ray through a thick lens. Notice that we were given the information about the direction of the ray as it enters the lens relative to the horizontal axis. That's converted into radians. We're also given the position two millimeters above the optical axis. Then we were given the information about the curvature of the front and the back side of the lens. The curvature of the front side is 10 centimeters. The curvature of the back side is a minus 10 centimeters because the curvature, of course, is away from the front of the lens. The index of refraction outside the lens is 1, which means it was air, and the index of refraction inside the lens is 1.5, typically somewhere that made out of glass, and the thickness of the lens considered to be 1 centimeter. Here is the matrix format that we came up with in the previous video. This is the refracting matrix for the second boundary, the refracting matrix for the first boundary, the transition matrix, and the information goes in here about the initial conditions of the ray, the initial direction and the initial height above the optical axis as it crosses across the first boundary. Notice we also need to know the values of D1 and D2. Let's go ahead and calculate those. For D1, this is equal to the index of refraction of glass, minus the index of refraction of air divided by the radius which is 10 centimeters 0.5 divided by 10 which is 0 0.05 and over here this would be a 1 minus 1.5 because that's inside the lens that's outside the lens divided by minus 10 again the negative negates the negative and this gives us 0 0.05 a positive let's quickly check that 0 0.5 divided by 10 sure enough Okay, so that we know those values, let's plug in everything that we know. So this is equal to a 1, a minus D2, that would be a minus 0 0.05, a 0 and a 1. Here we get 1, 0, 1. Now we need D divided by N sub L. Now D is the thickness of the lens, which was 1 centimeter, so that would be 1 divided by the index of refraction of the lens, which is 1.5. So 1 divided by 1.5 is, yes, 2 thirds. So we just go ahead and put 2 thirds down, that's easier. All right, here we write down 1, 0, 1. Minus D1 would be a minus 0 0.05. And then finally, we plug in the values here. Index of refraction outside the lens, which is 1, times alpha I1, which is 10 degrees, converted to radians, or 0 0.1745. And finally, the height above the optical axis, 2 millimeters, which is 0 0.2 centimeters. So these are the initial conditions of the lens. We want to know the final conditions of the lens. We can find that by multiplying these matrices, one matrix at a time, going from right to left. All right, so first we're going to combine these two. And when we do that, we get a single matrix that looks as follows. This times this, plus this times this. All right, so that would be 0.1745, so this one times this, and of course that would be minus minus 0.1 because point oh minus 0.01 because this times this gives us 0.01 it's a minus so we'll go minus 0.01 equals and that gives us a 0.1645 as the first element the second element is obtained by multiplying this times this plus this times this which gives us 0 0.2 0 0.2 there we go now we have to multiply the results of that multiplication times this matrix. So this times this, let me block, bring this one down. So we have 1, 0, 2 thirds, and 1. So when we multiply those two together, we get the following matrix like this. Okay, 1 times this plus 0 times this gives us simply 0 0.1645. 0 0.1645. Four, five, and then two thirds times this plus one times that. Well, that I need a calculator for. So two divided by three. So two thirds times zero point one four six times zero point one six four five equals. So I have this times this plus this times this, which is plus point two plus point two equals, and we get zero point three zero. Oh, well, about 310, rounded off, 
or I can keep four decimal places, so you see how that works. Four decimal places, 3.097. In case you want to try this at home, you'll get the same answer with four decimal places. So now we've multiplied the results of these two times this matrix to get this. Now we multiply this times this to get that matrix right there. So we bring this one down. So we end up with 101 minus 0 0.05, and that should equal this matrix right here. All right, let's go ahead and do that. So I have 1 times this plus this times this. That's, of course, a minus because the minus sign here. So we end up with 0.1645 minus 0 0.05 times 0 0.3097 equals and that gives us a 0 0.1490. See if that makes sense. Yes, that looks about right. And then for the second value right here, we have this times this, that's 0, plus this times this, which gives us 0 0.3097. Now, this is the result, what we're looking for. And remember, that represents this right here. The top number represents the index of refraction. And T2, that means the index of refraction outside the lens on the other side, which we know that NT2 must equal 1. If that's equal to 1, then the angle in radians is 0 0.1490 radians. So that means, we can say here, that alpha T2 is equal to 0 0.1490 radians. And to convert that to degrees, we multiply that times 57.3, and that gives us 8.54 degrees, which is 8.54 degrees. So that's the angle of that's the angle of the ray of the, the ray relative to the horizontal. That's this angle right here, which is 8.54 degrees. For the second number right here, that's the height above the optical axis or relative to the optical axis of y2. So y2 is equal to this, and that's in centimeters, so we can say that y2 is equal to 0.3097 centimeters, or approximately 3.1 millimeters. So those are the answers that we're looking for. We know the direction of the ray, and we know the position of the ray on the, relative to the optical axis as it crosses the second boundary using the transfer matrix as well as the two refracting matrices. And that's how that's done.